welcome to the Fast Money Halftime Report. We're getting to the heart of the action as it is happening. The stock market fighting back at this hour, shaking off fallout from a China bear market. Oil stocks leading this comeback as crude sprints higher. Can the bulls carry the day? Let's get to the word on the street right now. Our Fast Money crew today, the ambassador, Tim Seymour, Jared Levy of Peak Six, Carter Worth of Oppenheimer, and Eugene Profit of Profit Investment Management. Let's talk about that sprint higher in oil. Timmy, we saw the uh, drawdowns in the inventories, and that really helped us. We are seeing the equities advance where do you see the opportunities well i do i think oils and, and commodities are, are definitely leading the charge here you know 992 on the s p we've seen we're, we're basically at the lows of the average of the last two weeks oil seems to be wanting to take us higher between 11:30 and 12 gave five points on the s p so if you look at the dollar weaker if you look at commodities stronger it's a theme we've seen before and china is part of that reason ironically oil's pulling us out even though china may be weaker Eugene Profit, where are you looking at integrated oil services? Do you play the commodity itself through an ETF? Well, I think we would be interested in the integrated oil companies. We always look for diversification, and we think that the drawdown kind of indicates a little bit that the market might be coming back. Uh, investors going to look at it, a little bit of extra demand. Uh, we don't think that that's all intact, but we would look more towards ExxonMobil, a little bit towards the drillers. Uh, absolutely. And, and Carter Worth, you know, the concern here is that oil reaches a certain point, it becomes a drag on the U.S. stock market. According to your charts, uh, before we had to add as an Armstrong who's waiting for us on the fast line, uh, where sure. do you see oil heading? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the data was actually quite poor, right? Inventories are up 15% year over year. Uh, imports are collapsing. We think it's stuck. I mean, it's been here now, sort of, let's call it 60 to 70 for two months. We think it'll be here next month and looking out October, November, same kind of thing. So if it is stuck, uh, Jared Levy, uh, where are the opportunities based on oils remaining at around 70 bucks a barrel? Well, I definitely mirror his opinion. I agree there. China demand is up 4.2 percent over last year. That was something interesting, a number we didn't look at too much earlier. But option traders can sell calls on the USO, just collect some income as this thing kind of sits still. I also would look at doing what's called an iron condor around those around those strikes outside of the range. I agree. It's a great way to potentially. Basically, what does that mean, Jared Levy, iron condor? <laughs> You're selling it out of the money put spread and out of the money call spread, and you're collecting income as an index or as an underlier like the USO stays within a range. It's a great little option strategy to learn about. Tim, I don't think you're doing iron condors, but I know you're looking at no, the integrated. I, can, I can, came up with these I can names. barely fly with seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's move on and uh, talk about the market. I think we got Addison Armstrong. We'll get to him a little bit later on in, in this show. Uh, Carter Worth, you're concerned that we are seeing uh, energy stocks pull us higher. The breadth of this market rally, though, isn't necessarily there, and that leads uh, to the question of whether or not there is quality here sure, leading I mean, us higher. The, the breadth is excellent. In fact, the, the, I think the best way to measure it is, is a very old index called the Value Line Arithmetic Index, which rather than market cap weighted, takes uh, counts for stock by stock on an equal weighted basis. The value line uh, arithmetic is up 37% year to date, let's say, versus the S&P up 9, 10. So the breadth is there. At some point, though, it's a case of ripe, riper, ripest, and rotten. The breadth is almost so good that it, Im it implies the following. The large cap marquee names need to come to life here. Otherwise, the whole thing is sort of suspicious. What does that mean then, Eugene Profit? Do you uh, gear more towards the smaller, the mid caps? Do you go perhaps toward an equal weighted S&P 500 versus the actual index, which of course is market cap weighted? Well, I'm going to agree with what was just stated. I think that um, large caps is the place to be in this market in the first place. They're going to give you some downside protection just because of the integrated operations. In um, the second place, um, you've had quite a run-up in the small cap names in the early part of this rally. And as we're kind of getting long in the tooth there, and you see money begin to leave the market, I think you're going to get protection in large caps and you're going to get out performance through the balance of the year looking at larger cap names. All right, let's move on uh, to the next trade here. Of course, all eyes are on China, the Shanghai index officially in a bear market. It is still up, though, by the way, 53% for the year, even though it is down by 20% since it's August 4th. Carter Worth, you are the man who said to sell Shanghai on July 28th. You seem to hit it right on the button there. Uh, what's the direction here? Sure. So far, so good. I think this, uh, the, the main takeaway is that this is healthy. It needs to have done this. If, if China had continued at, at that rate of ascent, that steep an angle, then something really bad uh, in principle would be in the offing. By virtue of this give back, it takes a lot of the froth out. If one used oscillators, you could say the overbought condition has been worked off. So we would use the following parameters. The 150-day moving average comes into play at uh, 2,600 and change, or 2,700 and change now. Have and come off, as you say, 20% from 34.75. We would say 34.75, 2600 sets the range now, looking out prospectively to the end of the year. So, it, hey, it, Melissa. 
Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I was just going to say, Carter's Car making great points. What's interesting about Shanghai, though, is most people really are not invested in this market, not, not institutions here and barely institutions in China. So right. a 20% pullback in the Shanghai is, is really more kind of the, the tail. This is not the dog. The Chinese economy is the dog. And right now, we haven't seen that pullback. The Chinese retail market is heavily uh, inflated by a lot of bank lending and speculating. So I just say, be careful about overdoing this. I'm actually surprised at the attention it's getting uh, by the broad mainstream, even though Absolutely. China was an indicator back in 07. I, I completely agree. I mean, the fact of the matter here in China is that it is an immature market. 53% of the of the uh, investors there are retail investors. 10% of household wealth across China is invested in the stock market. So again, this is uh, the tail wagging the dog, so to speak, because it's not an anticipatory mechanism as the U.S. stock yeah, market watch, is. Watch the China debt at the end of the month to really see how strong this market is. Everybody is, is I think, in, in, in universal conviction that China alone can't lead the world out of uh, the current environment. I think the U.S. consumer is very important here. That's why we're struggling. China will probably still grow 78%. Right. Let's move on to the next right here and talk about technology shares. Of course, Hewlett Packard, uh, the tech titan, reporting earnings yesterday. A little bit of a disappointment there. The fourth quarter revenue forecast coming in lower than expected, although a lot of analysts on the street today are focused on the strength in the margins still. Jared Levy, uh, what are you seeing in terms of the tech trade in the options pits? You know, there hasn't been much in HPQ. We saw, obviously, volatility bidding higher as HPQ went into earnings. It was a real disappointment. Uh, HPQ obviously doing nothing today. What we are seeing a lot of is people taking more longer-term bullish uh, bets in tech. You know, and, and really that goes across the gamut. You know, even names all the way from, uh, you know, Google to Apple. I mean, everywhere from the Internet to tech, that's been the focus. But more longer-term bullish. A lot of protection trades happening here. We're seeing a divergence in the out-of-the-money options. In other words, if you look at the 25 delta call versus the 25 delta put, puts typically trade higher because of people's overwhelming fear versus greed. But we're seeing puts trade even higher and calls come in as people are collaring and protecting a lot of their short-term trades here in tech. Protection trades on, on what specifically, if you can, Jared? I mean, are you seeing the protection being bought on, on the cubes? Where? On specific stocks? Where? We see, we've seen it in Yahoo. I've seen it in HPQ a couple weeks prior. Uh, as I said, I saw it in Google. We're also seeing it in, in various tech names, right. a lot in the SPY as well. Okay. Um, but I haven't noticed anything in the Qs. Eugene Profit, I want to get your take on technology based on what Hewlett Packard reported yesterday. Does that change your view or make you more bullish or, or more bearish for that matter on any of the other uh, big tech titans out there, IBM for one? Yeah, well, I would buy Hewlett Packard here. I think that um, you only saw revenue down year over year 2%. The profit margins were a problem. You were down profits 19%. Um, but you're selling at a lower price earnings than Dell, which is going to re report on August 27th. Um, and we think that HP essentially um, has kind of indicated that the bottom has been set in right. technology. And th there was no commentary about the back to school sales, but we think that essentially um, HP with diversification between the printer ribbons right. and the uh, manufacturers that taken market share from, from Dell, the real issue was that they weren't getting as much profitability as sure. in Europe. And okay. so we think that it was an economic issue more than HP All right, issue. so Eugene's a buyer of Hewlett here. Okay, hold on <laughs> on tonight's Fast Money Report. We've got uh, your trader trading camp with Pete Najeri, the former NFL player, gives you the tools you need to succeed in this volatile market. But coming up next, Power Lunch looks at the fashion magazine indicator. As they get thinner, what does that mean for the economy? Halftime Report continues right after this. Congratulations, Google. Five years of giving Microsoft fits, but are you at risk of